Hi, it's Joe. Just want to do a quick recap review of the 172nd Spitfire I did by Airfix. It's finally done, and I can say that I really enjoyed building this kit. This is the second Spitfire that I've built. The other one was also 172nd scale and was also an Airfix, but it was a much older kit from the 80s, I believe 1983. And actually, even though it's been that amount of time in between the two that I did, they were both very similar to the way that they came together. Uh, this one did fit a little bit better than that one. I remember having to use a lot of different techniques to finish that one than this one. But this one still took a little bit of work. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. What drew me to this kit was the fact that it has these white and black undersides to it and I just think that that's really cool and very unique and it's something that the Spitfires had on them from for identification from the ground. Um, they used to have ground observation crews I guess that would identify airplanes and that was one of the ways that they could tell they were British from what I understand and I just thought that was very cool. So. I only spent about six or seven dollars on this after using a 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. So the amount of time that I got out of it, the hours put in um, versus the amount of money, very good value. So as far as putting the kit together, I didn't have too many problems. The cockpit was a little bit fiddly. I did have to remove some of the contact points on the fuselage when I was putting the two halves together to make it fit correctly. So I just kind of used my my knife to cut off the, the contact point and I was able to get it on after a little bit of work. It wasn't, wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but the wing roots also, I had to use a little bit of force to get those in. Not too bad, but there were a couple times where I thought I was applying maybe a little bit too much and you know I was possibly gonna maybe have the fuselage come unhinged because the two wings were kind of like pressing against it pretty decently. So I also had to use some filler and putty for this. But I was able to get it and it wasn't too bad. The thing that did kind of throw me for a loop was the propeller here. And the propeller I waited until later on in the build to put on. The instructions called to put this in when you're putting the two halves together. But I opted to wait until after I painted the kit because I figured it would be easier to paint it and then put the propeller in. And I dry fitted it and it fit fine because there's a little rod that goes in. But once I put all of the paint on it and all of the clear coats, it didn't fit quite as well as it did when I dry fitted it and what ended up happening was it was tight and it caused this whole top here of the nose to split open after painting it and you know putting the clear coat over it this thing just cracked open so I actually made a video about how I repaired this whole thing so I basically used some lacquer thinner to take off all the paint I just restarted from scratch and put the you know the paint back on it but it was a whole thing but a good learning experience so not all is lost also I waited to put the, the glass canopy on after I painted which you know if I was airbrushing this I would have put this on beforehand before painting it and I would have masked it and I would have like used filler to make you know if there was any gaps but I waited till late to put this on almost to the very end and what ended up happening was it wasn't a good fit this whole part right here there was a gap and then on the other side there was a gap it just doesn't it wasn't fitting right and it's something that I discovered pretty late in the game and you know you don't want a, a gaping hole there so I actually used Milliput to fill this in when I realized that and that's the first time I've really used filler 
after I'd painted and put the gloss coat on and everything, and I have to say Milliput worked very well for this. And I wasn't sure going into it how it was going to work out, but it worked out fine. I just painted it and you can, I, I can't even really tell that there's filler. So the decals, I believe these are cartograph decals, very good, very thin, came off the backing paper very well. I used Microset Micro Sole to put these in and it conformed really nicely to the panel lines as you can see here. I also dragged my hobby knife as the Micro Sole was setting it in to create the recess in the panel line then putting on the panel line accent, it made a really nice effect on these decals. It makes them look like they're painted on in my opinion, so very good decals. And the rigging, I just took a piece of sprue, unused sprue, and had a candle or a lighter and I just stretched it out and used Tamiya Extra Thin to put a little piece of you know, glue on there, cement, and just installed those. And then I took a incense stick and put the plane upside down above it, and that's what stretched it out taut like that. I just realized after I had recorded this that I forgot to leave out one of the most major things that I found with this kit, and basically it's these wheel wells in the color of the wings. I followed the directions and I painted the wheel wells like the color according to what the direction said and what ended up happening was when I put the two halves together the one on the the black side had a white wheel well and the one on the white side had a black wheel well so the directions I'm pretty positive told me to paint the opposite ones a different color. So I researched it and actually looked up a competitor model kit and they had these being called out as silver. So I went ahead and went with the silver color on here and I think that it turned out good after that. But just a little something to be aware of if you're going by the directions. And I found out as I was putting these wings on that they were not matching up. So one other thing to be aware of. So what do I think of the kit overall? Well, I think for the amount of money that you spend, again, probably going to be under $10. It's a good value for the amount of time that you're going to do. Do I recommend this to an absolute beginner? I probably wouldn't recommend it to somebody being their first or second kit. But if you have a couple of kits under your belt and you want something where you can kind of hone your skills, get some, some experience in sanding or you know using putty, that type of thing, I would say this would be a great kit and you will like the finished result once you're done with it. So I would say, you know, not quite absolute beginner, but definitely beginner to intermediate would enjoy this. And I think, you know, Anybody after that intermediate to advance would, would like putting this together and having this in their collection. So with that, thank you for the review. If you want to know any more information or anything more in depth, I do have some other videos where I have a complete build as well as a step-by-step -step video or series of videos. So with that, thank you for watching and enjoy your day.